The original Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 64 featured only 12 characters, and while every player had their favorite, each fighter has had their time in the spotlight. Even as the competitive scene developed for 64, there hasn't been a single character without some notable tournament representation. The original 12 characters solidified themselves a slot in every subsequent Smash game, remaining more or less relevant regardless of their competitive viability. Each Smash game added more new fighters, and Smash Ultimate brings every character from the series' history together, resulting in a total of over 80 names to choose from. Naturally, with so many fighters to choose from, some are less popular than others. So, for our question of the day, who do you think is the least popular character in Smash Ultimate? Let us know in the comments, and stay tuned to watch as we shine the spotlight on some of Ultimate's most forgotten fighters. Hey guys, Bonk here, and to learn more about any character, popular or not, you can check out our website, ProGuides.com. We've got plenty of resources from character guides to course programs taught by pros. You can even access skilled coaches via our InstaPro platform and join our live classes to learn with your fellow Smashers. To determine the least popular character in Smash Ultimate, we'll be looking at a variety of factors. We'll be paying attention to competitive representation in tournaments, but we also want to factor in online representation to look at the more casual side of things. Let's start with the character who's jumped massively down in popularity from the previous title. In Smash 4, Rosalina and Luma were always in contention for top 5 competitively. The Buzz frequently achieved strong results with this duo, but she was also well represented by players like Kirihara and Fallen. Although nerfed, DeBuzz has still gotten great wins with Rosa in Ultimate, so she's far from unviable. However, besides DeBuzz, you don't really see anyone playing her anymore. Fallen only brings Rosa out from time to time, and Kirihara still mains her, but hasn't been as active internationally. From the other perspective, when was the last time you ran into a Rosalina on Quick Play? This character has become so scarce in general that some players tend to forget she's even in the game. Years before Rosalina and Luma, Melee introduced the first duo character with the Ice Climbers. In Melee and Brawl, these adorable... siblings? Lovers? Friends? We'll just say this adorable pair was a popular pick due to their devastating grab combos. The Ice Climbers would prove too overwhelming for Smash 4's hardware to handle, but return in Smash Ultimate. There's a crucial difference, though. Ultimate's mechanics make any real chain grab impossible, so the Ice Climbers' trump card has been shredded. Has it, though? The few dedicated Ice Climber mains have still discovered creative ways to perform long combos by desyncing the duo, but this stuff is hard. Even just playing neutral with Ice Climbers requires a wealth of specific techniques and setups that aren't free to execute. This leads Ice Climbers to be one of the least common characters to see in competitive play, and even less common casually, where they can be awkward to control and manage. When Lucas joined Ness in Brawl, he gained some popularity as one of the more technical fighters in the game. Ness would far overshadow him in Smash 4, but he was still an interesting character with reliable throw combos, easy footstool setups, and most notably, a decent matchup against Bayonetta. In Ultimate, however, he doesn't have much of anything to argue for himself over the very relevant Ness. Bernard's Loop reports that less than 1% of tournament players main Lucas, although he is slightly more common on quick play. Remember that awesome trailer where Iwata and Reggie duked it out? That was probably the height of popularity for the Miis. Okay, and Sans. The three Mii fighters aren't exactly bad characters, but their lack of originality creates a negative impression in the eyes of most players. For the most part, they fit into archetypes that each have many better and more unique characters to choose from, so most players only choose to play a Mii fighter when a cool new costume comes out for them. Taking a closer look at the data compiled by Bernard's Loop, one of the most historically popular characters actually finds himself at the bottom of the list. Sadly, Marth is one of the least played characters in Smash Ultimate, and for a good reason. Better Marth, I mean Lucina. Smash Ultimate's mechanics and Marth's bizarre hitboxes make Lucina the clear choice if you want to play with the Marth moveset. Even MK Leo, who favored Marth in Smash 4, can't get behind the character in Smash Ultimate. The recent patch did make it a bit easier to land tippers, but he's still a far less rewarding character to play than Lucina overall. Right there at the bottom of the list with Marth is Ganondorf. 
Like Lucas, this is another character that you'll probably bump into a lot online, but not so much in Bracket. It's no secret that Ganon is a lower tier character, but his immense power is still usually a factor in drawing in a few dedicated mains. In Ultimate, however, Ganon has plenty of competition in this department. Players seeking a disrespectful heavy hitter may instead opt for characters like King K. Rool, Incineroar, or Ridley. With Dark Wizzy's consistent placings and Prodigy's infamous upset over MKLeo, Mario is seen as a top-tier character by most players in the current meta. Being the most iconic character in video games as a whole, Mario is guaranteed to be a popular pick regardless of his viability. But what if he went to medical school? That degree may be impressive, but Dr. Mario doesn't seem to appeal to many players. He's significantly worse than Mario competitively, sometimes even considered the worst character in the game, and like with Lucina, most players will just opt to pick the better version of this moveset. You don't see much of Doc no matter where you look, and although his KO power seems threatening, he's among the easiest characters in the game to edgeguard. And speaking of getting edgeguarded, Little Mac is most commonly referred to as the worst character in the game. His abysmal recovery and disadvantage state leave him nearly helpless as soon as he loses neutral, so not many players want to gamble with that in tournament. Online, Mac is a lot harder to react to, and thus is somewhat more common there, but still a pretty rare sight. Since Smash 4, the pits have been labeled as boring and honest characters who define mid-tier. This holds true in Smash Ultimate, where both Pit and Dark Pit are lackluster characters with little to offer. Even after their recent buffs, you don't see many players choosing the pits competitively or casually. They aren't good enough to achieve much in competitive tournament settings, but they also lack the cheese factor that many worse characters have, so they aren't very popular online either. It really goes to show the value of hype plays regardless of tiers, and the pits have few ways to pump up a crowd. Looking at Bernard's Loop's power ranking data, we can see another character fallen from grace. In Smash 4, Corrin was a DLC character who released alongside Bayonetta. She was overshadowed by Bayo's... Uh, um... everything, but Corrin was a strong character in the meta as proven by Cosmos. Smash Ultimate's Corrin, on the other hand, finds herself nerfed quite a bit, resulting in a less explosive, somewhat boring sword character in a game with characters like Krom and Cloud. Her most oppressive tool in Smash 4, Side Special, is far less effective in Ultimate, forcing her to rely more on aerial spacing in neutral. Cosmos has been putting more time into the character after she was recently buffed, but otherwise, when was the last time you saw Corrin make it far in any bracket? Even online she's scarcely seen, the needle in a haystack of Roy's, Crom's, and Cloud's. In both the character usage and power ranking data on Bernard's loop, Ryu finds himself significantly less used than his Echo Fighter Ken. This seems like a trend with Echo Fighters or clones who outperform one another. Ken is seen as overall more viable. He's faster, has more combos, and even more attacks in general. As the newcomer of the two in Ultimate, there's also still a bit more excitement revolving around Ken. Newcomers don't always bring excitement, though. Isabel received lukewarm reactions when she was announced, and her lackluster viability maintained this response upon release. Not only is Isabel a lower tier character, but she also suffers from the clone effect. Villager is pretty similar to Isabel, but much more viable, and tends to bring more hype as well with moves like the bowling ball and a signature axe. It's probably a good thing that Isabel isn't so popular, because she's precious and no one wants to see her getting attacked. Pokemon is one of the most highly represented series in Smash, so it's always likely that someone will get left behind. If you try to name every playable Pokemon in Smash, there's a good chance you'd forget to list Lucario. Debuting in Brawl, Lucario has developed a reputation for his polarizing design that essentially rewards losing. He goes from a weak and pathetic character to a terrifying master of cheese as his aura builds up but for some reason he's rarely seen an ultimate. The inconsistent nature of his gameplay is likely a big factor, and his moveset is also pretty awkward in general. Unless you live in Japan, you probably haven't seen too many duck hunts. Competitively, this character sees less use than in Smash 4, but you probably won't run into too many on Quick Play either. Duck Hunt is actually a pretty viable zoner in Ultimate, but he's far less iconic than characters like Pac-Man, Mega Man, and the Lynx, so players seeking that archetype are likely to overlook Duck Hunt. Finally, for the least popular character in Ultimate, we're going with Olimar. This was a difficult choice, because Olimar appears more in competitive play than many other characters on this list, but he's notoriously negatively received almost anywhere he shows up. 
Olimar really redefines what it means to be unpopular. He's a very uncommon pick by casual players, and sadly for his mains, a character that many audiences don't enjoy watching. In addition to being a more defensive character, Olimar's moves aren't easily understandable to viewers. When Krom swings his sword like a madman, anyone can tell what he's doing. But Olimar... His animations are a bit confusing to most people that aren't intimately familiar with the character. <sighs> Maybe Olimar mains should just pick Alf. And that's, that's a joke, by the way. We know that they're the same character, just like how I know that Pikachu is not actually a squirrel. That's comedy, or at least it's intended to be. Just thought I'd clarify that before, you know, the comments inevitably attempt to take a shot at that. Anyway, let's end the video. So, what do you think? Ultimate really does have a lot of unpopular characters. Let us know your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for more from Pro Guides.